Okay, team, here's what's been happening on Ghost Rider. The facts. First, Tina just got a great after-school job working for a famous movie star named Lana Barnes. First female action hero in American movie history. You're my favorite star. Tina's seen all of Lana's movies, like... Wings of Glory, Florence of Arabia, All Around the World, Dangerous Cars. In a few days, Lana is going to receive an award for lifetime achievement in the movies. You see, with all the excitement about the award ceremony, suddenly I'm getting dozens of fan mail filling my mailbox. And Tina's job is to help Lana answer her fan mail. She's having a great time until some strange things start happening. Like Tina reads one letter that's really weird. All around the world, you are a star. But I know who you really are. Do you remember me? I remember you. And soon the world will know who's who. Ghostwriter thinks it's a strange letter, too. But that's not all. Someone keeps calling and hanging up when Tina answers. Hello? Is anyone there? And the next day, there's a totally creepy postcard. Beware. That sounds pretty threatening. The stars get all kinds of letters, Lamb Chop. Lana may not be worried, but Tina's starting to get scared that someone wants to hurt Lana. So, the team gets together and Tina tells them what's going on. First of all, someone kept calling on the phone and hanging up when I answered it. And the team reads the weird postcard and letter and figures out some important stuff, like... Who's a mobster? The Mobster and Me is a title of one of Lana's movies. Here's Wings of Glory. That's a title, too. Dangerous Curves. That's my favorite Lana Barnes movie. Whoever wrote this used the names of her movies to threaten her. And that's not all. They were written by the same person. I was right. We have to warn Lana. Who would want to hurt Lana Barnes and why? And can the team warn her in time? Get a pencil in your casebook out and keep track of the clues because the Ghostwriter team is on the case. Don't panic. Call our house. She's not there. What are we going to do? How is she getting to the tailor shop? She said she was going to ride her bike. Well, maybe she's riding around somewhere. Yeah, she can be in the park. Tina, you go back to Lana's house in case she comes back. We'll get our wheels and search the neighborhood. Let's go. Come on. Yeah, yeah. come on. Come on. to get my bike and suddenly, suddenly the door slammed down and I couldn't get it open. <sighs> I think I know what happened. Mobster and Mink, you stole my wings of glory and flew all around the world. Dangerous curves ahead. Beware. You see, both the note and the postcard have movie titles and underlined words. And whoever wrote them seems real mad. Let's call the police. No, no, there's no need for that. Lana, you were locked in the garage on purpose. I'm afraid someone's out to get you. Do you remember what I said in my movie Dangerous Curves as I drove down that mountain road and my brakes went out? When fear stares you in the face, Spit in his eye. Right. Guess I'm not as brave as you. No. Bravery is simply a state of mind, pussycat. Now, when I was locked in that garage, did I panic? No. I simply took a deep breath, and I started working on my speech. Listen to this. <clears throat> Friends, Fans, 
Pookies from around the world. When I made my first film, when I made my first film... Wings of Glory. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. Thank you, Pookie. <clears throat> when I made my first film, Wings of Glory, with my co-star, the great... The great... Stone Harrison. Oh, Stone Harrison. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Why don't you just read your speech at the ceremony? Lots of people do that. Tina, Lana Barnes is not lots of people. I am a star. Oh, I can't just stand up in front of all those people with wearing my glasses and reading. No, they, they, they want to see the Lana Barnes they loved in movies. They don't want to see the real me. I love the real you more. Even more than the movie you. Oh, Janine. You are more precious than words. Janine? Oh, Tina. Oh, Tina, darling, forgive me. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I think I'm just tired. Maybe we ought to call it a day, huh? Sure, I understand. But my friends and I really are good detectives. I know we can solve this mystery. Well, if your friends are as spunky as you are, sparkle plenty, <laughs> then I would adore to have them on the case. You can invite them over here anytime. Grandma! Oh! Oh! <laughs> I'm so glad you're home. Are you okay now? I missed you. What are you writing? Well, now, don't get all worked up, Jamal. But lying up in that hospital got me to thinking about my future. It's time to get my business in order, so I decided to write my will. Your will? Aren't you supposed to do that when you're dead? Well, that would be pretty difficult, don't you think? <laughs> Look, sugar, you write a will so that your heirs will be taken care of properly. Heirs? Mm-hmm. You, Denitra, your mother and father, you're my heirs. You're the people who get my things when I die. Stop saying that. Oh, would you stop pushing me into an early grave? I don't plan on dying anytime soon. So just relax and stop popping your eyes out of your head. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ah, uh, not now? Not now what? N never mind, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. Oh. <clears throat> 21, 22, 3, 24, 225, 226, 227, 228. 229. 230. Alex, here's Colonel Rowley. We get to see Lana Barnes' house. Let's go. E man. <laughs> Thanks for helping me fill in this map, Rob. I owe you one. No problem. I gotta run. My dad and I are meeting with Double T. Help him find a place to live. Man, what am I gonna do? What about double T? Go ahead. I'll call you tonight and tell you what happened. Thanks, Lenny. Oh. Come on. Hey, Come on. who's she beating up in there? She's shadow boxing. It's her favorite workout. <laughs> I called this rally because I think the person who sent the postcard and the note is in New York now. And he's probably the one who trapped Lana in the garage yesterday. Let's try and find out who has something against Lana. Yeah. Let's do it. I'll get Ghost Rider to help. Hey, Lana Marcus.
march with Martin Luther King. Lana wore track shoes when she put her footprints in cement at Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. Hey, you guys, we're supposed to be looking for Lana's enemies. Ghost Rider! Evil Ed throws her into the snake pit. Wait a minute. Evil Ed is Lana's enemy in the movies, not in real life. Ghost Rider's reading one of Lana's movie scripts. He doesn't know what to look for either. We need a better plan. Definitely. Right. I'll start a Lana Barnes section in my casebook. What do we know so far? Um, oh. Lana was born in 1925, and she had four husbands. Four husbands? Yuck. This dame has been around a long time. I bet she's left a trail of broken hearts <laughs> aching for revenge. Um, Alex? Don't interrupt, sweetheart. I'm on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> You're just about to be toasting my little ham and cheese. <laughs> These are the friends I told you about. <laughs> so, flat foot. What do you want to know? Come on, sweetheart. Give up the groceries. Lay off, copper. I'm no snitch. <laughs> it says in my case, but you had four husbands. What about them, tits? Four husbands. <sighs> Three of them were big mistakes. But one, one of them was very sweet. Uh, just the facts, ma'am. I'm sorry. Please excuse me. Did we do something wrong? I think we may have hit on something important. Let's try and find out everything we can about these husbands. Especially the ones who are big mistakes. They must have done something to her. All of Lana's husbands are suspects. Yeah. Here they are, and who's who? Husband number one is Alan Charles. Number two, Carlo Peretti. And number three, Chi-Chi, um, G-A-C-E-B-O. Gazebo. Chichi Gazebo? That's the weirdest name I've ever heard. <laughs> and number four was Sylvester Argyle Stylus III. Hey, I just read something about him in this magazine. Here it is. Millionaire Sylvester Argyle Stylus III, husband of movie star Lana Barnes, is dead. Mr. Stylus fell out of his canoe while on a safari. He was dragged to the river bottom and eaten by a hungry alligator. Gross. I guess an alligator's lunch can't be too much of a threat. At least we got rid of one suspect. One husband down and three to go. Yeah. Yeah. Gata. Yeah, I need one. Yeah. Grandma, uh, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. I just love running through the house like a crazy woman with my hair on fire. Did I scare you? Screaming usually does. It's not a scream, Ooh. Grandma. It's called a kiai. Coming together, energy and spirit. Well, it works, because you done took all the energy out of my spirit. Oh. Oh, Jamal, please, please let me do something for myself. You are wearing me out trying to take care of me. Look, please, just go on up to your room so I can get me some peace. But Grandma... I'll I be fine, Jamal. Please go upstairs. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Three suspects left. Listen to this. 
Lana was stunned when she learned her husband, Chichi Gazebo, was a thief. While the couple vacationed in Paris, France, Chichi was caught red-handed trying to steal the Mona Lisa. <laughs> now he's spending the rest of his life in a French jail. Two husbands down and two to go. Listen up. I found something we can use about her first husband. Lana dumps husband without warning. Can you imagine that? Ooh, this is gonna be good. Luscious screen star Lana Barnes has filed for divorce from hubby Alan Charles. Mr. Charles and all of Lana's fans are shocked. <laughs> Honey lamb, I made you a star, you know. Please don't do this to me. I have nowhere to go, no money of my own. You'll ruin me! Oh, what did you say? Huh? What? I can't, I can't understand you, honey lamb. Please, just talk a little bit louder, honey lamb. I love you. Please, I'll call off your bodyguard. And tell me what you say! So, what were you saying, Zor? Pookie, I want you to use the same color polish on my toenails. Certainly. Penniless and alone, Mr. Charles left town. Boy, does he have a good reason to be mad. He made her star, and she dumped him. Yeah, he's a major suspect. We have one more husband to investigate, Carl Peretti. I can't wait to read about him. Tomorrow, guys. We're late for dinner. Come on. Your mom's got dinner ready. I'm not hungry. Me neither. I'm too busy worrying about you, worrying about me. Your grandfather and I watched your father grow up in this room. Now you're growing up here and I'm watching alone. When your grandfather died, folks said, stay in the house and mourn. Wear black for a year. <laughs> but I knew better because I trust life. I learned that from Mr. James Baldwin, one of my favorite writers. Didn't James Baldwin write Go Tell It on the Mountain? Mm-hmm. That was about him growing up in Harlem. He also wrote something else I never let myself forget. Trust life, and it will teach you in joy and sorrow all you need to know. But what does that mean? Well, honey, I think it means that no matter what happens, good or bad, you learn from it and you keep on keeping on even if someone you love dies. You understand? Yeah, I guess so. But uh, you don't have to worry about that for a long time. <laughs> I'll be fine. OK, Grandma. I want you to come with me tomorrow to my doctor. And if he can't convince you that I'm going to be fine, then you can have your head examined while you're there. <laughs> Grandma. I'm sorry I drove you crazy with my karate and everything. Oh, I'm sorry I got angry. You know you're my heart. And you're mine, too. Oh. Wow! Lana can outrun a camel, catch bullets in her teeth, and even do backflips on an airplane wing. Nobody can do all that stuff. She did it in the movies. They use trick cameras and stunt doubles for that. What? Stunt devils, men who do all the dangerous stuff. Well, Lana didn't have a stunt devil. Yes, she did. Lana Barnes bids farewell to co-star Stone Harrison while her stunt devil stands by. But that doesn't prove Lana didn't do her own stunts. Here, yeah. and you said there were men. That's a woman. It doesn't say which one the stunt devil is, but believe me, it's the man. 
Detective Pookie's look. I went out to get the mail, and some absolute angel had left this box of flowers on the doorstep for me. How bizarre. Where's the card? The queen should be thrown off the throne. She never would have made it on her own. Soon the rightful heir will take her place and the sun will shine on the true star's face. Lana Barnes is dead. Long live Lana Barnes. I've got two miles of jogging to do. No, no, you shouldn't go out alone. It's too dangerous. I am not going to let a wilted flower and bad poetry interrupt my exercise program. My star is on the rise. When Hollywood calls, I have to be fit and ready. At least call the police. Lieutenant McQuaid is a good friend of ours. He'll help. All right, I'll jog past the police station and have a little chat with your lieutenant. I'll go with you. If you insist, but you better keep up. All right. This is really scary. Whoever sent this is out to get Lana. Maybe we can find some clues in this note. The queen should be thrown off the throne. The queen? Do you think Lana is royalty? I think it means movie queen. Let me see that. Wait a minute, listen to this. She never would have made it on her own. This sounds like Alan Charles, the husband Lana dumped. Yeah, he probably feels like she owes him everything. I'm not sure I get this note. Soon, the rightful hair will take her place. They spelled hair wrong. It's pronounced heir. That's the person who gets your property when you die. Your house, your car, your money. So Lana would have to be dead before the rightful heir will take her place. Somebody's trying to kill Lana. Hold up. We don't even know who the rightful heir would be. Does she have any kids? Where's that who's who? She did have a kid. A daughter, Janine Peretti. We have to find out more about her. What are you doing? There's a million books to read. Maybe Ghost Rider can help. Please find Janine Peretti. Lana's daughter in a book. Hope it works. Me too. Lana Barnes, love, laughter in the movies. Lana's daughter is here. It worked. Way to go, Raph. Whoa, picture this. Janine Peretti was born to Lana Barnes and Carlo Peretti, her second husband. Carlo directed Lana in Florence of Arabia. They remained friends after they were divorced. Janine Peretti grew up on movie sets. She always felt her mother was too busy to pay attention to her. Feeling unwanted and unloved, Janine Peretti has carried a lifelong grudge against her mother. Boy, does she have a good reason to be mad at Lana. Yeah. But the article said that Carlo Peretti and Lana are still friends. That means he's not a suspect anymore. Right.
But we do have a new suspect, their daughter, Janine Ferretti, because she's been carrying a grudge and she's Lana's rightful heir. Yeah. And if Lana dies, she gets everything. Janine Peretti is a major suspect. We have to find out if she's in New York. And if she's trying to kill Lana. Yeah.